visual description, I am a f uh, five eight in height. I'm a black Kenyan woman. I have my Afro, my black Afro tied back, pinned back. I have curry shell earrings on, a uh, red dress, um, a Maasai anklet on my left foot, and I'm barefoot. I do know that. I know, I know. <laughs> you were just like, God, does someone, can someone tell her that she doesn't have shoes on? Um, <laughs> I, I don't have shoes on on stage usually when I go on stage, whether I'm singing or speaking, because my hands and my feet are like my eyes. They help me to sort of like, uh, with my spatial awareness, with my feet on the, on the stage, it just allows me to, you know, be comfortable and know like what's around me through, through feeling it, so. Um, I had this amazing speech that I had I've been writing for like three months now and practicing it with the speech coach um, it was just everything that you can think of a speech should be. It was it's like motivational, it's funny, it's, <laughs> it's entertaining, it's inspirational. Um, and this morning I decided to dump it um, because I feel like I'm going to like mess it up. So I was like, let me just ra like lower the bar really low so that if I do a good job, you guys will be like, oh my gosh, she did so great. But really, I just, you know, just did like this much more than, than the very low bar, so. But allow me to, to say thank you so much for letting um, me be here and uh, the opportunity. Um, people like me who come from places like I do don't usually get opportunities like this. Um, so I really appreciate our One Young World and Dutch MFA as well, so thank you very much. Um, so studies show that there is no group that is left further behind than black women and girls with disabilities in Africa because they carry multiple burdens of discrimination. They are four times more likely to suffer GBV, three times more likely to lack health care, three times more likely to be illiterate, they are two times less likely to be employed and two times less likely to use the internet. Black women and girls with disabilities in Africa are disproportionately uneducated, unemployed, exploited, impoverished and abused. Advocacy isn't just the work that I do, it's the life that I live because this is me and these have been my odds. As soon as I was comfortable in my skin, there was racism. As soon as I was confident in my femininity, there was sexism. As soon as I was proud of my youth, there was ageism. And now every time I come close to being at peace with my disability, there's ableism. I've lost job opportunities because I can't see. I have enrolled for educational courses and got in, but halfway through was discontinued by the institution because they could not anymore accommodate my disability. I have been swindled a lot of money because I can't see attempted assault because I can't see. As a young teenager, my eyesight began to steadily decline from a degenerative condition called glaucoma through which I acquired my disability. I've been able to live on two sides of the spectrum, one without a disability and now one with. And it's taught me a lot of things in the in-between one of them is to continue to encourage myself because, yes, I have glaucoma, but I don't believe that glaucoma has me. So I now live as a visually impaired person, but I decided to take back my narrative and I just ask folks to just to call me a VIP instead. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to start my life over again 
I had to accept, adapt, unlearn, relearn. And in doing so, I realized that this is not disability. This here is disability. And I also learned that it's not the white cane or the wheelchair. It's not the hearing aid or the prosthetic that holds us back. It's the environment around us that does. Buildings, streets, transport services are made inaccessible to people with disabilities every day, which directly impacts our odds. I always say to people, if I cannot walk into a business park comfortably, then I won't have a job. If I can't access a university campus, I won't have an education. If I can't access the local bus stop, I won't be able to travel. If I can't access a clinic or hospital, I won't get medication or medical care. The inaccessible environment began to show me that it's more than just our disabilities. It's the barriers that make us disabled. Today, if any of you go to Taiwan and you don't know the language, you will be disabled without signage that is accessible to you, right? If you go to the beach and you can't swim, you're technically disabled, right? So it's always about the environment around you. And that's what I discovered through my journey. So finally, I had the vision for once. And um, I needed a way for other people to see it. So my love for data took me to the conclusion or the idea that, hey, if you don't count it, it doesn't count. So how can I use data and this issue of disability and the environment and put them together? I set up a, a, a program called Ability with support from the Open Institute in Kenya. And the first phase of Ability was awareness. So creating content around inaccessibility and how that directly impacts the dignity the independence, the safety, the confidence, equity and inclusion of people with disabilities in Africa. Phase two of disability was to train a diverse group of young people in how to collect accessibility data, which I was now certified in at the time. And we were able to train them and go out and collect data on over 600 buildings and streets in Nairobi. This was tangible data collected by volunteers. That means you and I, ordinary citizens. And then we were able to put that data onto an open source map, which we called Mapability. Mapability now tells the user how accessible a building is before that person wants to go for a job interview there, a medical appointment there, a training course, or maybe to go and vote at the local elections in that building. It also tells a user how accessible a street is before planning their journey across town or going on that hot Tinder date. <laughs> <laughs> Women and girls, especially in Kenya, are the backbone of society, right? Um, they own the majority of SMEs, for example, in, in Kenya. And I feel that that is a similar statistic in Africa from my research. And Research also shows that three out of four women in Kenya have to use public transport or walk every single day. And out of those women, a fifth are women with disabilities. But the, access, but the accessibility is really poor. So how do they interact with the environment? How do they progress their lives? How do they take care of their families and themselves? Ability for the last three years has been using the accessibility data that we've been collecting to advocate for disability rights for women. It's been used to educate the non-disabled. It's been used to influence and champion inclusive, inclusivity um, champions. And also, it has been used to influence policy in equitable mobility in Kenya. Most recently, we had a really amazing win, and, and I'm really encouraged by the work that we did 
to inform the past elections in Kenya in, in Feb, um, not February, in August in Kenya. And our work and ability was used to inform how accessible the different polling stations across Kenya were for people with disabilities. And um, it was used to help inclusive elections to be promoted in Kenya. So the next, the next, <laughs> I promise, I didn't pause for like you to clap for me, I promise. Um, but uh, where I want to take ability next, um, which I'm really excited about, is into Africa. We want to move further into Africa to collect Africa-wide data. Because in Africa, the statistics show that there are 80 million people with disabilities. And out of those 80 million, 80% 80 always use public transport or must walk every single day. But the accessible environment isn't there. We want to identify inclusion champions across Africa. They could be engineers, road safety researchers, um, urban planners, transport planners, designers, teachers, students, anyone. We get them to Nairobi, give them accessibility audit training, then send them back to their home country so that they can mobilize more volunteers like you and together continue to um, audit the different um, home cities that they're from. And then we take all of this Africa-wide data and create and design an accessibility app or mappability, we'll probably call it. And with that, we can then have accessibility data on Dar es Salaam, on Dakar, on Pretoria, Kinshasa, Tunis, and more. So that when I, a woman with disabilities, wants to go out and absolutely crush the world, look for opportunities, go after my dreams, I can just do so without feeling, hey, the environment isn't built for somebody like me. Like I said before, my life has um, been pretty colorful, yeah? I have been able to live two lives actually in one. And to be honest, it's really difficult to be disabled. Um, it's taught me a lot, but it's really also broken my heart a lot. And um, it's painful to see everyone around you, your peers, the people that you started life off with, you had dreams with, you, 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 you know, fantasized about the future and the opportunities that are out there for you. It's painful to watch them go ahead of you and go and chase after whatever they want and go wherever they want while you remain stuck. And it's also really, really exhausting always having to work twice as hard just to get half as far because of the built environment. That's why with ability, I want to use that and serve my community, not just in Kenya, but in Africa, do my bit and say, hey, I see you, I understand what it's like. I've lived here and now I'm living here and I understand hidden disabilities, I understand what it's like to be invisible in a society that is moving around you and you remain left behind. I would love for you guys to, if you're interested, volunteer, because we need volunteers across Africa. You don't have to be an expert at anything, you just need to be willing to collect data. Um, it's very important and it's something that's important right now, not really tomorrow because people are suffering right now with disabilities. I'm one of them, I'm a lucky one, I'm standing in front of you today, but without these opportunities, I wouldn't be able to, to tell you the things that I'm telling you. That's why it's really important to me to have everyone feel seen, not just um, live a life feeling like you're a ghost. Um, Ability.or.ke is where you can find the map if you wanna check it out or you can talk to me um, I'd love to shake all your hands before we all go away tomorrow. And um, I'll leave you with a couple of other things that I've learned just outside of, of our ability and accessibility, which is number one, when you hear no as a young person, think next. It's really helped me. And also, I believe that 
the world needs your gift as much as you need to give it. So don't hold back. Vulnerability has been an issue for me in my life because I feel when I'm vulnerable, people take advantage of me because of my disability, because I'm a woman, because I'm black. But the stronger you are, the stronger you make others. And also, I also believe that you sort of have to start in the darkness in order to appreciate the light. And um, it's helped me get to this point where I came to England as Miss Crystal Asige and I'm leaving the UK as Senator Crystal Asige. Woo! <laughs> Um, so I'd like to thank you all so much for welcoming me here today and uh, over the week, and I just hope to continue engaging. Shukran. Honorable Senator Crystal Asige, everyone. Thank you.